In the dry, arid lands of Israel, there's a growing new religion known as hockey. With hockey comes a sense of belonging to a team, a sense of friendship, fellowship, and tolerance. It's an idea that started small. I was here three years ago, and I came up to see a little hockey, and I looked around, and I didn't see any kids. So I went around, and I said, what's happening? So a young fellow named Labov tapped me on the shoulder, he says, could I speak with you? I said, all right. He said, I'm a farmer, but I love hockey, and I love kids. Could I open up a hockey school? Hockey is a very expensive sport. And we have some kids, many kids, that are not able to afford themselves to come to play hockey. I said, OK, I'm going to be here two days. Come back to see me. He came back with a piece of paper. And he says maybe $20,000 because it's very expensive, the ice time. I said, OK, it's a deal. And so it began, the genesis of an idea to bring Jewish and Arab kids together in sport. I says, OK, set up the kids. He says, I can get maybe 20 kids. I says, all right, I'll send some coaches. So for a year, we had 25 to 30. Now we're in our third year, we're up to close to 400 kids. One of the main things that we want to do is to expand it the side of this program and to bring more kids, not only 300, we want 1,000 kids. And after that, we want it to be in each area in Israel. And after that, all over the world. Because we see that this program helped to fix one of the main problems that we have in the world today. Well, you know, Israel is a different type of country because of all the nationality. But if you want kids to play with each other, this is really, I think they get up, they want to put all their equipment on. Because they're so happy with the helmet and the pads and the skates. What kids learn from hockey is how to build friendships and gain respect for one another. And that respect lasts for the rest of their lives. I never knew uh, anything about hockey until they start to build the center. For me as a child, they live in Metula with only a few friends in this class because we are a very small class here. Uh, I want to feel more, more friends around me, to have more friends. And so I, I pick the hockey to, to make my friends circle larger. When I was small, I was there because of the game. I was there because of hockey. I was there because I like to be with a bunch of great guys that become to be my friends. Some of them are not living in the north, but they're still some of my best friends. When you go to play hockey, you go to be with your friends, with your family. And when we start our school, this was one of the things that was very important for me. I didn't want it to be only hockey school, only a professional hockey school. Because I know that what held me inside the system, inside the game, it was the community and the warmth that I got from all my bodies around me. And this is all one of the goal. When we start this school, we say first, we need to, to act for the kids and to make everything like it's, it's one family. We start the school, we had a few great, great players. But they didn't act like the family. We try to teach the kids and try to let them understand that it's good to be a hockey player, but it's not everything. You need to have much more. You need to have to be a good student and a good friend for the people around you. I went to all the mayors around Metula and tell them, guys, come, we open a hockey school. It's not cost anything. Just bring your kids. Help me to publish that. And the mayor of Mother Sams, he was, he was, yes, sound like a great. How much it cost? Nothing. I'm in. How many kids I can bring? I say, I don't know, 100? You have 100 next week. 
It is a movement that is growing fast. Hockey teaches them to be friends, regardless of their cultural history, leaving no room for anti-Semitism. Where the only conflicts are played out with good nature, on the ice, and not on the streets. Well, if you look at tennis, it's one against one. I hate you, then you hate me, I want to beat you. So when you get in, into hockey, you've got to play together. You've got to pass the puck. So it's a, a game that we play together, not an individual sport. The kids learn by example from their coaches. Kids are kids. They know each other pretty well, obviously, from playing hockey together doing things together physically. How do you think the parents understood their children being together with people that live such different lives? I, I remember before we went for a trip to Canada, there was uh, one particular parent who had somewhat of an issue with uh, the kids either staying in the same room together or at the same billet house in Canada. Right. Uh, we, once we got through to her and said, this is what the school's all about, and really we're just hockey players here. We're not looking at the cultural differences so much. Mm -hmm. So you saw a big difference not only in her thoughts towards the whole situation, because um, she heard from her kid regularly on what a great time they were having, and, right. and the new friendship that was bonding. So uh, it really turned uh, that parent's whole thoughts, whole thought process around. I brought them last year to Canada, to Ottawa, and we brought them to see the Prime Minister, and that time, Bibi was there, and the Prime Minister said, just a minute, he held his meeting up, came outside to welcome the kids, the Israeli kids. A lot of the Israeli kids, I never seen the Prime Minister in Israel. So you can see the emotion as you listen to the parents, what it did to them. And sometimes parents can learn from their children. Do you think the friendship that you find over there we will keep forever? Yeah, Berg is uh, my friend, and I think uh, we will be uh, friends for the rest of my life. As a player, do you have any concern to play ice hockey with Jewish kids? No, I, uh, I love ice hockey so much. What do you like more? Do you just want to be a goalie? Goalie. A goalie. Luckily for us, we're teaching kids who are kids, you know, so they haven't grown up with hate on their mind the whole time. Usually that's developed like through years and years and years of, you know, hearing this stuff from at home or at the school. And we're getting these kids at a pretty good age where they're still fairly open-minded. It's been challenging at times, but because they want to be better hockey players, they're willing to just go through that together. The hockey game makes huge difference because many things. One of the things that you go inside the zone, you go inside the ice, you close the doors, and it's just you, the puck, the net, and all around is closed. You're like in a different, a different world. You're now in the hockey world, and now we don't care. You don't care about what happened outside. What the what the parents thinking about that? What the parents tell you back home, you care only on one goal, to make a goal. And this is the only thing that you have in your mind. You have to make a process. First step, to bring people together. Just to hang up together, to play together, to, to go to see movie together. Whatever you want to do, just do it together. You don't need to be friends, you don't need to push them to be together. As a friends, as a hockey players to play in the same team, you don't need to do that. And we as a school didn't push the kids straight ahead. Okay, now you play with the Jewish kids in a mixed team, good luck. First we bring them an ice, we teach them how to skate. We give them to feel comfortable to be in this location. Then we bring other kids to teach them how to play. 
and then we take these harp keys and twist it and only then we mix them together. I believe that to make the change you have to do it slow, you have to do to take the kids out of the parents, out, out of the houses because the kids bring it from home. The kids listen to the, the parents, what they are talking about and dinner, when they see TV together and they bring that to the ring. We, the instructor in the ring, need to deal with that. When we go to Canada, we have a few parents, Jewish parents, that tell me, I'm not expect that my son will sleep in a house with an Arab people. What are you talking about? You don't mind that you play together ice hockey, but you, he's not able to stay in the same house? And she was 100% yes! I say, I'm sorry, it's against it's against the spirit of the school. And I tell her, don't worry, it will be okay. And back home, she came to me and she said, I spoke with my son just before you arrived. And he told me he had the best time in the world. And thank you very much for everything. If you look at the kids when they put on the equipment, first you don't know if it's a girl or a boy till she takes off her helmet. But it's amazing how the girls are going to it. When you do things with kids, there's a feeling. And it's whatever you do, it's worth it. I'm agreeing 100% that anti-Semitism come because people don't try to find the truth. People go after stories and it's very easy for them to take it. It's very easy for them to, oh, he f this is what my friends say, so it's probably true. I have a few friends that change their mind about Jews and about hockey, uh, but not enough. Fresh beginnings and young faces bring a renewed optimism for peaceful coexistence of all cultures and new reality for all to strive for. Yeah, I mean, it's part of the goal. It's, we want to we grow hockey here, and if we can get it to where we can have Arab kids and Jewish kids playing together and learning to be friends and work together that way, then it'll transcend to the different areas of life. I hope by next year or the year after to have a thousand kids in my thing. I'm here today, I was in Nazareth. There again, we're gonna have about 75 kids join the school next year. I spoke to Beersheba, they're gonna have another 7,500 kids. So all of a sudden, I'm going into the small villages that are Israeli, and Arabs, a way to, to get together. And this is what one of the things that make me feel like I can go home now. I did my job. <laughs>